In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural tile floor material in Blender. And also after we create the procedural material, I'm going to show you how to turn this material into this custom node with all of these different settings. And all of these settings are also right over here on the side panel. So we have the overall scale to scale the entire material. We also just have the noise scale and just the tile scale. Then there's also a roughness value to make it more shiny or rough. And then there's also tile bump to change the bump of the tile and noise bump as well. And making these custom procedural material nodes is something that I plan on doing from now on in the future in all of my procedural tutorials. If you'd like to purchase this material and also help support me and this channel, I will have links in the description to where you can purchase this material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can also purchase more of my materials by checking out my Blender procedural material packs, and if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. So before we start, I thought I'd show you the 3D setup if you want to set it up the same way that I have. Or you can add this object really onto any object, like a floor object. So what I did is press Shift A, I went to Mesh, and I added an Icosphere. And then right behind me, if you click on the Add Icosphere Settings, I just turned the subdivisions up to 6 so that it is very smooth, and then I shaded the object smooth. And then I also rotated this object over on the x-axis by 90 degrees, and that way you'll be able to see the tiles on this side instead of the top. And then I also pressed Shift A, and I went here to Mesh, and I added a plane, and I just scaled the plane up pretty big and brought it down. And then after I scaled the plane, I pressed Control A, and I just applied the scale. And then I also added a camera, and I just pointed the camera at the object. Now for the lighting, I added in this Machine Shop 02, and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can go over here to the World Properties, and you can click on the New button to add a new world if you don't already have a new world. And then right here on Color, you can click on the yellow dot, and you can choose Environment Texture under Texture. And then you can click on the Open button and open up the HDRI. And then also down here on the strength of the HDRI, I just turned this to a 0.8 so it's a bit less strong. And then I also pressed Shift A and I went down here to light and I added the area light. And then once you add the area light, I turned the shape to rectangle and I turned up the size Y and the size X to make it very long. And then also right here on the color, I made it a very, very slight yellow color so it's a little bit warm. And also on the power here, I turned this to 400. And that way we get some nice bright lighting shining on the objects. Now also if you go right up here to the render properties. If you want to make the background transparent so you can't see the HDRI in the background, then you can open up the film tab here and you can check mark the transparent button just so that you can't see the HDRI in the background, but it's still going to light the scene. And then also to make the colors a bit nicer, right here on the color management, I turned the view transform to filmic and the look here I turned to very high contrast just to pop out the colors and make everything look nicer. And then I'm in the shading workspace, so I have the 3D viewport right here and I'm in the rendered view and then I have the shader editor right here. So I'm just going to click on the new button to add a new material and I can rename this material to tile floor. And then I can just click right here and I can drag and drop this material onto the other object. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on Edit and you can go to the Preferences. And then over there on the Add-ons tab, you can search for Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, I want to make a base texture for the tiles. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I can search for the Musgrave texture. Let's stick the Musgrave texture right here. And then I can Control Shift and select the Musgrave texture. That's using the feature of the Node Wrangler and it's going to preview the node on the object. And then also with the Musgrave texture selected, I'm going to press Control T, that's using another feature of the Node Wrangler, and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I want to use the object coordinates, so let's put the object into the vector of the mapping, and the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the objects more evenly. And then this mapping node can be used to scale the entire material. So we're going to plug all the textures up to the mapping node, and then we can change the scale of the mapping, and that'll change the texture size. 
So now let's change some of the Musgrave texture settings because I want to make it more detailed. So I'm going to turn the scale to like a 2.5. I think that is pretty good. And then I'm going to turn the detail all the way to the max of 15. So you can see now it has much more detail. And then to make it even more detailed, I can turn the dimension all the way to zero. And now it is very grainy and that looks a lot better. It has way more detail. So I can now take the height and we can put the height into the base color of the principled shader. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now I want to change the colors because I want to make this look more brown. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I can search for a color ramp. And I want to put the color ramp in between the Musgrave and the principal. So we can now change the colors of the color ramp to change the actual color of the material. So if I click on this white tab here, I want to click on this color and I want to make this kind of just like a dark brown color, not super saturated. And then this color right here, if you click on the black tab, I want to make this kind of like a light brown so it's going to be a bit brighter but not too bright. And if you want to use the same colors that I'm using, then right over here on this side, this color is going to be a hex value of 3F2819. So you can punch that in if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using. And then right over here on this tab, if you click on the color here, if you want to use the same value that I'm using, you can punch in a hex value of 564839. That's the exact color that I'll be using. So that is looking pretty cool. Now I want to add a little bit more variation to this texture. So I'm going to press shift A, I'm going to go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a noise texture. And we want to put the noise texture underneath the Musgrave. And then let's take the mapping vector and I can put the vector into the vector of the noise texture. And then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So we can now change the noise texture settings. So I'm first going to turn the scale value to three. And then I also want to make it very detailed. So let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15, so it's more detailed. And then also the roughness here, I'm gonna turn that to 0.7, so it is even more detailed. So I now wanna take the noise texture and I wanna combine it with the base color that we already have. So I'm gonna press Shift A, Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the mix node and I want to bring the mix node right up here. And if you're using older versions of Blender, then this is the mix RGB node. But in the new version of Blender 3.4 and future versions, this is now just the mix node, but it'll work exactly the same whether you're using the mix RGB or the mix node. Now, right here on the mix node, we're using color values. So I want to click on the float here and I'm going to instead change this to color. And then I want to drop the mix node right here between the color ramp and the the principled shader so just drop it right there and then I want to take the noise texture factor and I want to put that into the factor of the mix here and then I can control shift and select the mix node to preview it so the factor is going to determine where it's going to be color a and where it's going to be color B and again if you're using the mix RGB node a and B is just renamed to color 1 and color 2 but it works exactly the same so right here on color B we can click on this and we can make it any color that we want so I want to make it kind of like a light brown color now you can see it's kind of affecting the entire material and that is because this noise texture isn't very contrasty so I want to make the noise texture more contrasty before it goes into the factor so I'm gonna click on this color ramp right here and I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate it and I'm gonna stick it in between the noise texture and the factor and then if I select the color ramp I can hit the backspace and that's going to reset the color ramp so I can now drag these two tabs together and that's going to make it more contrasty and to see what it's doing I can control shift and select the color ramp to preview it so you can see that as I drag these values together the black is getting darker and the white is getting lighter so I'm going to drag the black tab to about here and then the white tab to about there and then I can control shift and select the mix node to preview it so now you can see it's much more contrasty so I can now click on color B and I can change this to whatever color that I want so I'm gonna make this kind of an orangey color but then make it dark and the hex value that I'm using for color B is going to be a hex value of 58442D so now if I control shift and select the color ramp and control shift and select the mix and go back and forth, you can see it's adding a bit more variation to the color and I do like that better. So now I can control shift and select the principal shader and I wanna bring the material output back. 
Now I also want the roughness to be slightly different along the texture because I want some parts to be a little bit more shiny and other parts to be a bit more rough. So I'm going to take the noise texture factor and I'm going to put that into the roughness of the principal shader. Now I want to have more control over it. So what I'm going to do is select this color ramp right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And let's put this color ramp in between the noise texture and the principal shader. And then I can hit the backspace to reset the color ramp. So we can now drag the values around and we can change these colors to change how rough the material is. So I'm going to click on the black tab and I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to make this a bit brighter. And you can see as I turn it up, if the colors are lighter, it's going to make the tiles more rough. So I'm just going to make it kind of like a mid gray color or a bit darker. And if you want to use the same hex value that I'm using for this gray color, I'm going to use a hex value of 3333. 3, 3. So this material is looking pretty cool, but we don't have the tile pattern. So let's now make the tile pattern. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the wave texture. And let's put the wave texture underneath the noise texture. And then again, I want this mapping node to be able to control the entire scale of the material. So we want to put the vector into the vector of the wave texture. And then I can control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. Now, if you click here on the bands direction, I want to change this instead to Y so that the bands are going in the opposite direction. And then I'm actually going to leave all of the other settings at the default. Now to make this actually look like tiles, we need another wave texture which is going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to click on the wave texture and I'm going to press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the node, but it'll keep the wires plugged up and that way the mapping node is still plugged up to the wave texture. And then this one, if I Control Shift and select it to preview it, it, I want to change the Y instead back to X so that it is going in the opposite direction. And I'll leave the other settings at the default. Now I do want to be able to change the size of the wave textures to change the tile size, but I don't want to scale the scale values on this mapping node because that's also going to change the scale of the Musgrave and noise. So I want to put another mapping node here before the wave textures. So what I'm going to do is select this mapping node and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to stick it here in the wire going between the mapping to one of the wave textures. And then I want to take the vector of the mapping and I want to put that into the other wave texture. So now this mapping node is just controlling the size of these wave textures. Now before I change the size of the waves, I want to join them together because right now they're not actually joined together. They are both separate. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for the mix node. And let's drop the mix node here. And then we are working with color values. So I want to click on the float here and I instead want to change that to color. And then I can take both of the wave texture colors and I want to put that into A and this wave texture, I want to put that into B. And then I want to control shift and select the mix node to preview it. Now I just want to add the dark values because the dark values are the stripes of the waves. So on the mix node here, I can click on this mix and I can change the type to darken instead. And then right here on the factor, that's going to control how much it's using. So if I turn the factor up, it's going to add more and more of the texture. So I'm going to turn the factor all the way up to one. So it is using both of the dark values of the wave texture. And now you can see that looks like tiles. So now if I go back here to the mapping node behind the wave textures, I can change the scale because right now these are way too small. So on the mapping scale, I'm going to click on the X and then I'm going to drag down and then I can drag back and forth and this will change both values at the same time. And I actually want to type in a specific number. So I'm going to click, drag down and then let go. And I'm going to change this to a 0.17, just a 0.17. I think that is a pretty good size. All right. So I now want to take the dark in here and I want to put that into the normal to give the material some bump. So let's take the result here from the darken and I'm going to put that into the normal. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now you can see it's not really doing anything. It has these little dark areas and that is because this is color data, but then this is normal data. So we need a node in here to convert the color data into normal data that the material can use. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the bump node. And let's put the bump node in between the darken and the normal. 
And then I want to take the result here and I want to put that into the height value. And that way it's going to convert it to normal data. So you can now see it looks like we have all these little bumpy pyramids. Now I want to make the edges more contrasty because I don't want them to be bumpy all along here. I just want them to be bumpy where the end of the tiles are. So to make it more contrasty, I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the map range node. Let's click on the map range and I'm going to put the map range in between the darken and the bump. And then I can control shift and select the map range to preview it. So if you zoom in here, you can see there's some gray values. And so that's what's causing that pyramid shape. So what I can do is change the map range values and then that'll make the colors more contrasty. So if I hold down the shift key, I can drag the from max and you can see if I drag this down, it's going to make it much more contrasty. And I'm going to turn the from max to a specific value of 0 0.002. So just 0 0.002 and then hit enter. And you can see now it is very, very small. And then I also want to turn the two max up. And if I turn the two max up, it's going to brighten up those light values and make it even stronger. So I'm going to turn the 2 max to a value of 11. So now if I zoom out here, you can see that those edges in the tiles are very, very small. So if I now control shift and select the bump, you can see it's just going to be bumpy in those little areas. So I can now control shift and select the principal shader. And you can now see we have a really nice tile pattern. Now I also want to add just a little bit more bump over the entire surface. So I'm going to click on this bump node and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And let's stick it here after the first bump. So the normal can go through the normal, but we now have this other height value that we can add data into. So I want to take the noise texture factor here. I want to put the wire into the height of this new bump. And that's going to convert to normal data. And so this way we can mix multiple bump maps together. Now that is way too strong. So I'm going to turn the strength way down to make the tile much more smooth. And I'm going to use a strength value of 0.07 on the bump. So now if you kind of zoom in closely, you can see it is bumpy, but it is much more subtle. And then one more thing that I forgot to do, the roughness isn't very contrasty, and I do want to make it a bit more contrasty so that some parts are a little bit more rough and other parts are a bit more shiny. So I'm just going to drag this gray tab out a bit, and so you can see it's more contrasty now. So I'll just drag it to about there, something like that. And there we have it. So there is the procedural tile material. So if you want to end the tutorial here, you can, but I'm now going to show you how to group this into a custom node and add different values that you can change to change the procedural material material. So what I'm going to do is click and drag, and that's going to add a box select. And I'm just going to box select all the nodes except the material output. So with all the nodes selected, I can press control G and control G is going to join them together into a group. And then you can press the tab key to go in and out of the group if the group is selected. So I'll press the tab key to go out of the group. I can just bring this up here and then kind of zoom into it. And right here, if I make this bigger, I'm going to make this pretty big. We have a name here. So I'm going to rename this to tile floor. Now we don't have any custom values. So I want to add some custom values to this shader. So I'm going to select the tile floor group and I will press tab to edit the shader. And you can see right over here, it's added a group input. And so we can plug values into the group input and then that'll show up on the shader. So I'm first going to take this first mapping. I'm going to take the scale and put that into the group input. So now if I press the tab key to go out of it, you can see we have X, Y, and Z values, but I just want one value to change the entire scale at once. So with the tile four selected, I'm going to press the tab tab key again, and I want to turn this into a single value. So I'm going to press the N key to open up the side panel, and then I'm going to click right here on the group tab. And you can see that there are inputs and there are outputs. And also on the outputs right here, you could leave this to BSDF, but I want to double click on this to rename this. And I'm just going to rename this to shader because I think that's a bit nicer. So that way, if I press the tab key, you can see this now says shader. So I will press the tab key to go back into the group. So right here on the inputs, we have a scale value and I'm going to click on this. Now, if you want to rename it, you can, but to make it one single value, I don't want it to be a vector type. So on the type here, I'm going to change this instead to float and float is going to be a single value. Now, when I do that, you can see it kind of gets rid of the entire material. And that's because on default, it's set to zero. So we basically scaled the entire material way down. So I can press the tab key to go back out of it. And then right here on the scale value, I can turn this back to what it was, which was one. So change that to one. And now I can change the scale value and that'll change the entire scale of the material. So I can now press the tab key to go back into the group. 
So if I go back here to the group input, I can add extra values into the socket to control more values. So another value that I want to control is the noise scale. So right here on this noise texture, let's take the scale and I can put that right in here to the extra slot. And then right up here on the inputs, I can rename this. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to rename this to noise scale. I also want to be able to change the tile scale. So right here on the mapping, we can change this scale value here to change the tile scale. So let's take the scale here from this second mapping. We can put that into the socket. And then right here, if we click on this, we can double click on it to rename it. And I'm going to rename it to tile scale. And then right now you can see it's a purple dot because it is vector, but I want to click on the type here and I want to change this just to float so that it is a single value. And then you can see it goes away. You can see the tiles that have disappeared. That's because it changes it back to zero. So if you just unplug the scale here, you can see the value was 0.17. So on the tile scale, I can put this back up to the scale and then I can press the tab key and the tile scale was 0.17. And now you can see that the tiles are back. So I can now click on the group and press the tab key again. Now I also want to be able to change the roughness, but if you go right up here to the color ramp, you can see there aren't any values that we can put here into the group input because this is a color ramp. So instead we can add a node in here to change the light values and dark values, and then that'll change the amount of roughness. So I can press shift A, I'm going to go to the search, and I can search for the hue saturation value node, and let's put the hue saturation value in between the color ramp and the principal. So right now it's not doing anything on default and that's what we want. If I control shift and select the hue saturation value, we can change this value and the value is going to make it lighter or darker. And if the values are lighter and darker, it's going to be more rough or more shiny. So I'm going to control shift and select the principal shader again. And what I want to do is take the value from the hue saturation value and I want to bring that all the way over and stick it into the socket here. And then if you click on this to change the name, I'm going to rename it to roughness. And then I also want to be able to control the strengths. So I want to take the first bump and I want to bring a wire out from the strength and I'm going to drag all the way over, put this in here. And then right here, I can click on this to rename this and I'm going to rename it to tile bump strength. And then if you go back here, we have this one here. So I'm going to take the strength and I'm going to drag this all the way over and I'm going to put this into this socket here. And then this one is going to be noise bump strength, noise bump strength. And that is it. Those are all the values that I'm going to add. So I can now press the tab key to go out of the group. And you can see we had the temporary viewer. So to get rid of that, you can just control shift and select the shader and that'll get rid of it. So now I can change the scale. That'll change the overall size. I can also change the noise scale and the tile scale. Also the roughness. You can see if I turn this up or down, it's going to make it more rough or more shiny. And then we also have the tile bump strength and the noise bump strength. So there we go. That is how you turn this into a customized procedural material and as I mentioned at the starting of this video I do plan on doing this from now on in all of my future procedural material tutorials because it makes the material a bit more easier to use and a bit more useful and there is the final render so thank you so much for watching this tutorial I hope you found it helpful and I hope you enjoyed it and if you'd like to help support me and my channel and purchase the material you can get that on my Gumroad store and my patreon page links in the description you can also check out my procedural material packs to purchase more of my material and you can also learn how to create any of my procedural materials by checking out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube with the link in the description. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you'd like to send me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube underneath this video. And I do appreciate your support. But I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.